Hey guys, today I'm going to give you a fairly brief introduction to uh, Facebook's Audio 360 Spatializer for post-production really and doing uh, post-production 3D sound, binaural sound, immersive sound or immersive audio. And we're going to go through all these variables here and what they mean and how they sound. So first we have you over here. This is the listener, so you've got headphones on, and this is the source of the sound. Okay, so these are distance indicators, so minus five is five meters behind you, plus five is plus five meters in front of you, and you can add, oh, oh zoom out to, I think it's 50, yeah, 50 meters. So it scales down now. It seems like this dot is really right next to you. Or you can zoom in if things are a little bit closer. But that is always at five meters, or is it uh, distance? This is at two meters, sorry. That would be five meters there. So if it sits at five meters, still at five meters, just the scale changes. All right, so moving downwards, we have here the azimuth, which is basically an angle. Uh, from relative to where you're standing. So you're at zero, zero, zero on the on the um, x-axis and zero on the y-axis. So as you move this around, it'll just go in degrees. You can see that's 90 degrees, pretty standard. Moves around to 180. So 180 is right behind you. And then it goes to minus 180, really, or 179.9. And moves in negative increments up to minus 90 there and back to zero. So that's pretty straightforward. If a sound is uh, to your front left, it'll be sort of minus 45 degrees, front right, plus 45 degrees or so. Then you've got elevation. Elevation is also an angle. This is your angle up and down. So you won't really see it here because um, this will be moving up towards the screen really and down away from your screen. So you can see if I do elevation, you don't see any movements, but if I had to do that at 90 degrees and that, it would be right on top of your, well, put it on zero if we can, be right on top of your head. Distance is pretty standard. Yeah, it just goes all the way up to 60 and that means you won't see it on this scale. It's a bit strange that they put this to 50 and that to 60, but anyway, that's the furthest distance goes and you can bring it to wherever you want. Spread. Now spread, I find I don't use too much because I prefer the sounds to come from a single source here, which is generally the case. Like if I'm speaking, my voice will come from one source from a mouth and travel a distance to the listener. However, there are some sounds that are, are more um, spready or spreading. Say, for example, this is a waterfall, right, which is 42 meters away. You could point to it and uh, it would be in one location. As it comes closer, it starts to sound a bit wider until you're standing underneath that water. In that waterfall, the sound is all around you and your spread would literally be at a factor of one, it would be everywhere. So I'm guessing what you would do is over there, the spread would be say, uh, yeah, 0.1. And as you move closer, your spread would increase, not by much. And then all of a sudden it would sort of curve up to a completely immersive sound at one. So minimum distance is the minimum distance you will, that the attenuation will kick in. So if I have a minimum distance set to one, anything, where's my distance? Anything below one won't drop in sound. As soon as it gets above one here in the distance, you'll start to hear a drop in sound. So if I make my maximum, my minimum distance, say 10. So here you've got Four meters, you won't hear any drops in sound, nothing, nothing. The sound will be exactly the same, exactly the same 
and then it'll start to drop from uh, 10 onwards. Maximum distance is the maximum distance that you'll be able to hear a sound. If an explosion goes off or a cannon fire or something like that at one kilometer away, you'll be able to hear it. Okay, but if you set that down, that your max distance is 700, you won't hear it, you won't hear the cannon fire because uh, it's out of that threshold, and you'll only hear the sounds that are within this 700 meter. Um, spread. So you would change this depending on the sound. So let's say a whisper. A whisper, I would say you could hear at maybe 17 meters. I don't know. Rough guess. And if you take that whisper here and you move it further than 17 meters, you won't hear it. The algorithm is that it just cuts the sound out, but it will attenuate up until that point and then cut out. If you set your max distance to say 500 or thereabouts, you will hear that whisper all the way, which is a bit unrealistic. So a whisper, you would have a max distance, say there, talking a little bit more, shouting a little bit more, cars a little bit more, and then big sounds, explosions, and that sort of thing all the way up here. So this is the sound, this is the distance, the maximum distance that a sound can be heard. Anything over this will be silent. Anything under this will be heard with the attenuation. Now, factor is an attenuation curve. So that means how much does the sound attenuate or how much volume do you lose as the sound moves away from you? In real life scenarios, a factor of one means that the sound drops by six dB every time the distance doubles. So by way of an example, if you've got a sound that's uh, at one meter or so, whatever it might be, and it plays at, at volume of zero dB, as it moves away by two meters, then you've got minus six dB. When it gets to four meters, you're on minus 12 from the original. When you're on minus eight meters, you're on minus 18 from the original sound and so on and so on. So it's a, it's a curve, it's an attenuation curve. Okay, so Doppler effect is that sound you get when a sound passes you and seems to drop in pitch. So you'll have a, a car coming as it passes you like that. That drop in pitch is the Doppler level. So, I mean, having it up here would be way too much completely unnatural so in, you want to keep it around here but again you've just got to play with it until depending on the sound remember this is an algorithm so it's not it's not real so you've got to you've got to play with it until it fits the sound that you're working with and lastly we've got room room um is a room and it creates reflections for reverb and i, f I find this is quite good actually it mimics you being inside a room where there's where you're where a sound will bounce off a wall you will hear uh the direct sound you'll also hear a reflection coming off so that sound is reflected off a hard wall obviously a lot less present outside but i find it needs to be quite high to be audible so again play around with it but somewhere there you start hearing you start hearing the room then the reflection order is how many reflections you, you're getting. So one, um, you'll hear the dry signal, uh, which is the direct sound, and you'll hear an echo sort of once. Uh, there's only three of these, so two reflections, three reflections. Yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, stay posted for more videos.